Today we're going to talk about photosynthesis. Photosynthesis happens in the chloroplast, and here's my nice chloroplast, which is upside down for some reason, but that's all right. Uh, it doesn't know a right side up or an upside down in reality, so um, chloroplast has an outer membrane, an inner membrane, and a thylakoid membrane. The thylakoid membrane, actually, it turns out, is actually uh, contiguous with the uh, inner membrane, uh, but um, that's okay. Uh, we don't need to worry about that too much. Um, and then it has uh, the stroma, which is uh, basically analogous to the uh, cytoplasm of a cell. All right, so let's move in. We zoom in and we take a look at the first part of uh, photosynthesis. And these are called light reactions because they directly harvest light. And they happen across the thylakoid uh, membrane, which is the... Uh, well, it's continu continuous with the inner, or the inner chloroplast membrane, but it's you know considered uh, it makes these nice little little folds and stuff for uh, increase the surface area, of course. Um, and so let's start with uh, light uh, comes in and excites an electron in this uh, first photosystem. Uh, so the electron gets excited; it gets passed off to another molecule. And in this small electron transport chain here, not the same electron transport chain as in mitochondria, um, we're going to pump some hydrogen ions or protons across this membrane into the thylakoid lumen. Um, the electrons of, that are moving through here eventually get onto photosystem one. And in photosystem one, uh, the electrons get excited by another uh, packet of light, another photon of light. And then they go down a very short electron transport chain and wind up on a molecule called NADP+, making NADPH. So if you remember from respiration, we had NAD+, going to NADH. So this is simply a, a very similar molecule. And um, all we've done is stored some electrons here on NADPH. Okay. Uh, once we have a high concentration of hydrogen ions here in the middle, uh, we can use that concentration gradient. Um, before we talk about that, though, we've harvested a pair of electrons from this photosystem, too. Uh, we need to get those electrons back, and the place that we steal those electrons from is a water molecule. So if you remember in respiration, we put electrons on water at the bottom of the electron transport chain, here, we're going to steal electrons from water, um, putting them, you know, putting them on photosystem 2 so that we can run an electron transport chain. So if you remember, um, in respiration, there was no external energy source. In photosynthesis, there is an external energy source. This process is all driven by uh, light energy. And so by... Uh, by creating oxygen here and getting rid of water, we wind up with more hydrogen ions here in the thylakoid lumen, in addition to the ones that we pumped using this electron transport chain. So we now have a high concentration of hydrogen ions in the thylakoid lumen, and then just like we did in respiration, we're going to use chemiosmotic phosphorylation with the ATP synthase, we're going to allow those hydrogen ions to flow back down their concentration gradient back into the stroma. And then we're going to use that ATP synthase to force a phosphate onto that ADP, making ATP. So those are the light-dependent reactions. There's actually a lot more we could go into. Like, for example, what the heck is light anyways? Uh, this light that the plant absorbs is pretty much um, red or blue, and it doesn't absorb green, which is why plants appear green. But I think we're going to leave the light reactions there, uh, and then we'll go on to the next thing, which is uh, the Calvin cycle. Sometimes the Calvin cycles are re referred to as the dark reactions, but that is incorrect because Rubisco does not work in the dark. Rubisco is an enzyme that's activated only in the light, and what Rubisco does is uh, it takes RUBP, which is a five carbon compound, and attaches a carbon dioxide 
to uh, that RUBP and splits it into two molecules of PGA. So five carbons plus one carbon gives you two molecules that are three carbon compounds. Um, and that stage is called carbon fixation. Remember that uh, carbon dioxide is actually uh, very scarce in the atmosphere. Uh, it's only about 400 parts per million. So this, uh, this reaction happens and it's, it's kind of amazing. It's like we make sugar out of thin air with plants um, and other synthetic organisms, but at any rate. So we've got these two molecules of PGA and what are we gonna do with them? Well, um, here we're taking some molecules of ATP and hydrolyzing them to ADP which you should recognize this step as an energy requiring step. So we're using energy and we're pushing these three PGAs uphill energetically to a higher energy state. And then in another set of reactions here, we're gonna take NADPH, which if you remember has electrons, and we're gonna dump those electrons onto those molecules making you know, releasing those electrons, making NADP plus, um, but those electrons are used to make bonds, and we we wind up with uh, glyceraldehyde three phosphate GA three P. Um, now, the stoichiometry on this, that the books try to show a bunch of stoichiometry, and if you have six molecules of GA three P, you can regenerate. F you can take five of those molecules and regenerate your three molecules of RUBP and harvest off one three carbon compound that you can then use with another three carbon compound to make a glucose or three more three carbon compounds to make a sucrose, et cetera. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't get too hooked, too, uh, too caught up in all the stoichiometry here, um, but that, uh, that regeneration phase also uses ATP. So where does the plant get all this ATP from? Where does it get its NADPH from? Well, it gets that from the light reactions. So this cycle, the Calvin cycle, does not work without ATP and without NADPH, and it does not work in the dark because Rubisco, the enzyme itself, has to be light, is a light-activated enzyme, okay? So uh, you can work on you know, all the stoichiometry here if you want, um, but uh, you know, this is basically the Calvin cycle. Um, so note that uh, if you have five molecules of three carbons, you can make three molecules that are five carbon long, carbons long because you know, three times five, five times three, it's the same amount of carbons. All right. And that is all I have to say about photosynthesis.